Welcome back to New Cats on the Block. We are in our ninth game, or playing our ninth game, uh, against the Purdue Boilermakers. Uh, this is our second to last road game uh, before the season ends. I believe we finished the season in Illinois, um, in Champaign, playing the Fighting Illini for our rivalry game. Uh, but today we are focused on the Boilermakers, known as the Spoilermakers today. Um, and they are in the middle of their, uh, their Joe Tiller era. Uh, which would be pretty successful for them, I believe, in the year that this game takes place. Um, they would finish, I think, tied second in the Big Ten, um, and they would go to a, a pretty nice bowl game um, I, that I think they would lose. But um, in this game, <laughs> so far this season, uh, Purdue season has not really went as well as they probably hoped, like uh, a few of the teams on our schedule so far, like Wisconsin. Um uh, they're sitting at 500 here, 4-4. Four four. Um, we are currently on our two-game losing streak thanks to an absolute folding job by our defense uh, against Indiana in the last minute of that game and uh, a boneheaded interception by yours truly in the Wisconsin game in overtime. So two very close games that we easily could have won, which would put us right on the doorstep of our uh, six-game minimum uh goal for this first year uh, and the season is about a game or so another loss or so from just being completely lost uh, for us we, we really need to win today if you want to keep any hopes uh, of our season really uh, coming alive so uh, I tried to uh, switch to the playbook a bit so we could run the ball a bit more um, instead of pass 50 times because we won't be successful if we have to do that but um so I'm going to try experimenting with some of that as we already have an incompletion. And Purdue's going to play some solid defense because they know that we pass. So on third and eight, can we get a first down in advance? And we find number two, and we do, as the pressure gets to our quarterback, who is injured. They got to him, and they hurt his knee. So hopefully this isn't too serious. We're going to have to rely on our backup here, number 16, um, who has, uh, this is his first start, make his first start for the Wildcats so far this season as uh, we try to go through the ground game again. And uh, number 18 breaks the tackle on the backfield, but still can't really get further than the line of scrimmage. And there we see number 14 has an ACL sprain, and he will not be back today. So number 16 is going to have to be the MVP here and lead us to a victory against the Boilermakers, as uh, we can't really connect on that one. He put the ball where it needed to be, but uh, we couldn't uh, come down with it, so... And I think this quarterback's overall is like in the low 60s. It's a it's a steep drop off. I, I know 14. I think is like uh, I think he's like an 83, and then we have like two backups who are like 62 and 63 respectively. It's kind of a toss up. I didn't really go to the depth chart when our quarterback came in. I just assumed that he was the best guy for the job. So I went with him for this game. And as we uh, cannot uh, pu push the ball any further, and we have to give it to Purdue, who lays that one up and finds number 82 all alone on an island. And our free safety makes the shoestring tackle to save the touchdown. But in one play, Purdue already uh, tapping inside the red zone here. So first and ten, they're going to go with a fancy uh, little play fake and flip it out to the receiver number two on the outside and uh, a nice open field tackle made uh, by, uh, I believe it's number 28. So second and short for the Boilermakers. They have a ton of room here uh, with the run game here and they get brought down near the first down marker. So Purdue is uh, already moving the ball very easily on our defense. First and goal, they're going to go with the pitch to the outside, but we have that play well covered in the backfield, and uh, the running back's not going anywhere. Solid play by our linebacker there. So second and goal, it's a long second and goal for Purdue from about the our 13 or 14-yard line. They're going to go with another pitch to the right side, and this time he's got a little bit of blocks, and he gets brought down by our linebacker at about the 5-yard line. So they get a good bit of what they needed back, but they uh, still have a, a good handful of yards to get into the end zone. So third and goal, uh, we're, we cover that one very well. We tip that one. We had a few guys in the, in the end zone who uh, could have got a hand on that one. A very contested throw to try and make uh, for Purdue. They're going to send out the uh, field goal kicking unit to try and convert here, uh, and they do just that. So Purdue's going to take a 3 nothing lead here off of a, a seven-play drive. And remember, it just took them one play to get into through the red zone, so they kind of faffed about for about six more plays uh, just to get three points. So our defense folded there on that first play, but uh, tightened up for the rest of that drive. So uh, we can't be too upset with the outcome of that drive. Uh, and I do want to point out again, much like the Indiana game, uh, we are playing again in hurricane force winds, so uh, expect that to be or to play some kind of a factor in the game, just like it did in the Indiana game. 
uh, as we uh, can't get nothing on our first down uh, run play. So we're going to go through the air again, and we find number nine, who uh, makes a little uh, a toe tap along the sideline to stay in bounds and get another few more yards close to the first down marker. Nice heads up play by him. So third and one, we're going to go with the fullback to pick up the rest of what we need, and he gets it. Uh, he gets brought down. The tackle's initiated in the backfield, but we fall forward over the marker, and we have enough. So it's first and ten now as the first quarter's coming to a close. What can we do? We're scanning over our options, and we flip that one up to number nine, who makes a catch again. And we've got another first down here. We're working uh, into Purdue territory, working closer. We got to answer back here this field goal as the first quarter comes to a close with the th th uh, three points. The early field goal being the uh, only deciding factor so far. We are still very much in control, um, or can be in control here as we go with the run to the outside. Now we have some blocks. We get to the outside and get brought down out of bounds near the marker. Probably our biggest gain so far today. Probably in the last uh, several weeks, <laughs> our biggest gain. So on second and inches, we're going to go with the fullback again. He's got a ton of room uh, right in the middle going straight north as uh, Purdue has an injured boilermaker on the field or strong safety. So we're going to go to first and ten now. We're working closer and closer uh, in Purdue territory. Got to get to the end zone as we float that one out to number two. Makes an amazing catch, uh, an amazing read by our quarterback. Gave that one a ton of time for that play to develop. We found him right in the corner. So first and goal, can we get some points of our own? We try to go with the ground game, and Purdue has that one very well covered. They know we like going to the right outside edge there, and uh, they cut that one off. They sealed it off from us. Nice heads up play, but Purdue. So second and goal, it's a long second and goal. We're going to try to roll out here, and we find our tight end number seven who steps into the end zone for our first touchdown. And our quarterback is hyped because that is his first touchdown this season for the Wildcats. We had a couple open guys on that rollout. That's why I love calling that rollout, man. It's almost like uh, it's NCAA cheese, and I'll take the cheese all day long. As uh, That kick kind of goes awry, but we uh, got, actually got a good kick off the leg. I actually didn't screw that one up, but the wind, I told you, man, the wind is going to play some bit of a factor. But fortunately, it does go in, so our lead goes to four uh, early on in this ball game. And there we see another arid kick is saved by the wind, thank goodness. So, uh Purdue's going to field that one cleanly and bring it up to about the 30-yard line. Field position's probably going to be pretty good for both teams all day today. We just got to have to accept that. So first and 10 for Purdue. The pressure's on to their quarterback as they get uh, the screen pass off to the running back. He barely got rid of that one. If you see this here, when, when the tackle was made, the ball just kind of awkwardly flips out. Uh, but the running back was able to make the catch. Uh, wasn't able to do much more with that play, though, however as we had that one covered fairly well. So, second and seven out for Purdue. They're going with nobody in the backfield. This quarterback's going to drop back, and the pressure's on. He breaks one tackle, and all the tackles around just fall apart. He's got no one in front of him, 40, 35, 30, and he gets brought down by our cornerback. Maybe if he had a little bit of speed, he would have been gone. Only 166 rushing yards on this season. And I feel like he just picked up about 40 of those right there in that play. As now Purdue's going with the option. And there's, again, nobody in front. 10-5 touchdown for Purdue. On two huge defensive just breakdowns and mistakes, Purdue was able to score. So three plays. Remember, the last drive was seven plays to go 75. They just went 70 yards in three plays. Uh, thanks to two humongous running plays by their quarterback and their running back, respectively. Uh, for some reason, our defense just was not in position to make the plays. And that is a huge, huge mistake, as there's another injured Boilermaker. That's another strong safety. I think they've injured both of their strong safeties now in the last couple minutes. So it's uh, first and ten now for the Wildcat offense. We try to run the ball again, and there's just nothing going on. Maybe we need to invest in some run blocking. I'm not sure, man. I'd probably just call better games. So second and ten now for Wildcats. We're going the shotgun here, and we flip that up to number nine again, who makes a great catch past the marker to give us another first down. So we're not struggling too bad to at least move the ball somewhat with our backup quarterback, but uh, there's still a lot of time left here. So we cut to second and 11 now, and we're going to flip that one up to number nine again, who has it, because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> He's become one of our favorite targets here in the last few weeks. Uh, used to hit into two all the time, but uh, and there we try to hit number two, and uh, that passes errant. And there you see the uh, the effects of a, having a 63 overall quarterback <laughs> as your starter. 
Uh, we're trying to go with the ground game again. We get a little bit of coverage here, follow some blocks, and get a generous animation to pull us forward. That play really didn't look like it was going anywhere, but we were able to extend it into something. So third and short now, we're going to try and go with the ground game to get the rest of it again, and we cannot do it as Purdue has that play very well covered. But with less than a minute and a half left to go in the first half on fourth and two, you know we got to keep the offense out. Four down territory. We're going to try and roll out again, and we find our tight end, who uh, kind of scared me. He gets brought down, like, I think before the marker, but uh, he made the catch well uh, ahead of it. So uh, with under a minute to go here, around 30 seconds, we got to try and uh, do something quick here to score. A couple weeks ago in the uh, Indiana game, uh, we were really trying to add some points or not add some points, but prevent Indiana from scoring points. And we had a huge, huge defensive mistake, which allowed Indiana to score as time expired. So uh, we're going to try and uh, swift the momentum our way and uh, try and save it here for uh, for us, trying to give ourselves an advantage here coming into the second half. So 16 seconds left. What can we do here? Second and 10. We're going to try and float that out to the running back, and we have it, and he gets brought down inside the five-yard line. So with 10 seconds left, what can we do? The safe thing here would probably be to just send out the kicker and try and convert this here, but we're playing with wind. Our kicker's not been ice all year long, so we're going to try and score here. We got a, a couple chances as we try and roll out, and our tight end had it in his hands but couldn't haul it in. With seven seconds now, what can we do? Second and goal. We're going to try and roll out again here, try a different pass play, and that somehow gets to our tight end. Man, that should have been picked off. I don't know how the linebacker missed that one. As you saw that their starting linebacker, middle linebacker, got injured for the game. So that must have been their backup or, or something. But uh, that ball somehow finds its way to our tight end number seven in the back of the end zone, who has his second touchdown of the game. We're going to try and compensate for some wind here because it is blowing, and that works in our favor as we send that one right down the middle uh, and extend our lead back to four and take a 14-10 to 10 lead over Purdue, which is three seconds left in the first half. So that was exactly what I was trying to do here. Uh, try and take that momentum. I don't know how much that factors into this game, um, but definitely trying to, uh, to, to to do that, get in our own heads <laughs> and give us the advantage here. Um, as uh, we have another errant kick that gets saved by the wind, thank goodness. And if you saw in the first half stats, man, we are controlling the game as far as time of possession goes, but uh, we have just the two touchdowns to show for that, which I think is fine. I guess it's, it's efficiency somewhat. Uh, to control the game and at least add some points out of there. So we almost have an interception thanks to our middle linebacker, uh, but he can't come down with it. Um, but if that that uh, that stat changes any way for Purdue, then uh, we'll, we'll be in a world of hurt. So second and ten for the Boilermakers. This quarterback's going to drop back, and he's got a man out there, but uh, he sends that one about five yards ahead of him towards the uh, the sidelines. So third and ten for Purdue. Can we get them off the field? we got to have it here. Goes with the pump fake, and he's got his man open, but on the uh, on the tackle, he drops it. So we save a, a potential first down here for Purdue uh, and uh, make a great play on defense. Uh, solid uh, solid opening drive here for, uh, for our defense, and uh, they're going to punt this one away, and the wind is going to sail that one out of bounds and give us a little bit more favorable... Uh, field position here. So we're going to go with the ground game again and the seas part. And we've got room and space as we get inside the 20 before we are brought down. I figured we might have had the speed maybe just to get away, but uh, th those Purdue boys, they got they got a pep in their step as well. So, but we're inside the red zone. We're already cooking with something here. We're going to try and go with the ground game again and he fumbles, but recovers his own fumble. And now we're caught in the whole mess of players, the dog pile, and we cannot get free as he's finally brought down. I probably should have just started spamming juke buttons and spin buttons to get out, but I had no idea what was going on. Uh, so second and 11, we're going to flip that one to number two, and that one gets batted between a few different players before it is picked off by Purdue. That is a tough break for this Northwestern offense. We had been playing tight all game. I hadn't made really that many boneheaded decisions as far as passing goes, uh, and then that happens. <laughs> So on the next play, Purdue's going to flip that one out to uh, to the wide receiver number 22. And again, we have Wildcats in the vicinity surrounding him, but he somehow comes down with it. I'm so tired of watching that, man. So tired of it. First and 10 now for Purdue now uh, at about their own 20-yard line, no, 21. Quarterback's going to drop back. We send some pressure. Nothing gets to him, and we float that one out. Or he floats that one out to uh, number 82, who was uh, in position, but uh, we had a safety there that was also in position, and the ball just sailed uh, a little bit further. 
Uh, his quarterback's going to go with a keeper now, but I don't know why he would. He does not have the speed, so he gets brought down before he can really do much of anything. He's not going to get lucky like he did earlier in the game. We're not going to let that happen again. So another third down for Purdue. We have to get them off the field. The quarterback's going to drop back. There's no one in the backfield, and he flips that one out quick to number 20, and again, we have a man in position to pick that one off when we can't. Oh, man, we really need to have it from our defense when they can get it, and they did not get it that time, so... Purdue's going to extend their drive here following uh, that uh, very unfortunate interception for us. And again, the quarterback's going to try and keep it. But I told you, they're not going to get away with that again as we are in the backfield and able to gobble him up off of the edge. Second and 10 for Purdue, they're going to go with the run game. Again, go with the running back. And he gets brought down by a linebacker with nowhere to go. So I like that we're able to kind of silence the run game here for Purdue. If we can at least seal off one aspect of their game, then it should make defending them relatively easily. But we haven't been able to stop them on third down. How can we do it on this third down? Third and 12. Quarterback looks over his options. And again, he finds his man with men in the area. But this time we get lucky, and he can't hold on to the football. So that's going to bring up fourth and 12 for Purdue. So they're going to punt this one away to us. It's an awkward punt with the wind, and we can't hold on to it. The punt is muffed, and Purdue falls on top of it. A humongous mistake for the Wildcats special teams. We did a good job of finally getting Purdue off the field, and we essentially just gave them a free first down. We gave them the 12 yards that they needed off of that muffed punt. So a huge mistake here on special teams gives Purdue a... Uh, a new uh, chance at life here uh, on this on this drive off of that turnovers. We just give them another one, but uh, so far they're unable to connect here on their last couple pass plays. So uh, can we can we uh, force a, a three and out here for this Purdue offense here as they go three and ten just past midfield or right at midfield? They're going to float that one out, and he has his man number two wide open, but he can't connect. This quarterback has been relatively inaccurate so far this game, which is uh, bizarre to see. I haven't seen too much of that from the CPU quarterbacks, but uh, this guy seems like a bit of a plumber. <laughs> so uh, so we're going to go for another punt here, and we're just in position to make sure we have it. Uh, probably should have called a fair catch to prevent another fumble, but it's okay. Number 28 holds on to the ball this time, and uh, we have this one going the other way. So we don't give up too many points or really any points following our two mistakes so far in the third quarter, but we have to get the ball moving. Remember I said a little bit ago that if the time of possession stat flips, then we're going to be in trouble, and Purdue has held the ball this entire quarter, so uh, we got to do something here to add some points and extend our lead if possible. So third and one, we're going to go with the fullback here, and he's got some room and gets knocked down just past the line of scrimmage, and we've got ourselves another Wildcat first down. Maybe I should just strictly run with the fullback. The fullback dives seem to work a lot more. <laughs> Maybe I should just stick with those. So first and ten is the uh, third quarter is coming to a close. What can we do? We float that one out to number nine. And their cornerback, number 12, makes an amazing play on the ball and tips it to himself for another Purdue interception. Oh, man, I saw the window. But number 12 just was on a, on a pick-seeking missile as he uh, cuts that pass off and just tips it to himself. And that'll bring the third quarter to a close as we get another interception in the second half. So uh, we went through the first half playing pretty solid ball and uh, a couple mistakes here. See, there are already three turnovers here just in the third quarter alone. This is how our games fall apart for us. So second and 12 for Purdue. we got to play tight defense here. If we want to preserve our four-point lead, can we do just that? As uh, the quarterback floats it up to number 82, and we had our safety just sitting there watching him, but I guess he didn't want to make a play in the football as uh, Purdue could say uh, a first down well inside the red zone. Another pretty big mistake for our defense. And, I mean, look at this. He's just sitting there looking at him. I don't know what 29 was doing. He's just He posted up and said, I got it, coach. I'm waiting for the tackle. Make a play in the ball, son. First and goal for Purdue uh, from our six-yard line. They're going to go with a handoff to the running back, who's got a little bit of room up the middle and gets brought down at about the uh, one- or two-yard line. Purdue is knocking on the door. What can they do to convert here? It's second and goal. Letting the time just wind down. And they're going to go with another handoff, and we are in the backfield, and we have that one covered. So it's going to bring up a big third and goal here for Purdue. What can they do here to add some points? I'd love for us to make a goal line stand here. Can we do just that? Is they're going to go with the running back again? And he's got the room, but he fumbles, picks up his own fumble, and carries it into the end zone for another Purdue touchdown. 
Oh, man, he had a window, too. He had, a, like, a, a hole there towards the middle, like, right past center, and he missed that one. Fumbles it. He gets spun out and fumbles, uh, and no one is there to pick it up except for number 25 himself, who gets brought down into the end zone. So a very bizarre turn of events here on the goal line, but uh, it turns fruitful for Purdue as they retake the lead here, retake a three-point lead with uh, about four minutes left to go in this ball game. So... This game is still very much manageable for us, but we haven't done much of anything in the second half. We've had a couple really unlucky turnovers um, and then just a boneheaded special teams mistake as we get a nice return by number two here on the kickoff. We haven't had too many nice returns so far just on the channel, period, uh, and that's one of the better ones. So we get good field position at least to uh, try and answer back to Purdue's touchdown uh, as we try and go with the ground game yet again. And uh, it's a little bit more successful than normal, but uh, still not much doing on that run play up the middle. So we cut to third and six here. We're already facing a third down. We have to have it now. And we look for the running back, and we float that one out, and that one's just not where it needed to be. That one needed to be a little bit more of a missile, uh, but instead it was a, a bit of a lob over the middle. Dangerous throw. So we have to give this one back to Purdue, who's in complete control of this ball game. We have to stop them here. As the running back breaks some tackles, and he's got no one in front of him. 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10. We are in pursuit, but it doesn't matter. One play is all it takes for Purdue, and they add another touchdown. A massive, massive failure on our defense. Breaks one tackle, breaks another tackle, and gets to that edge, and there's just nobody back there. Oh, man. The run plays, I don't understand this, man. It just, we haven't been a team that's given up a lot to the run all season long. And 25 is at two major rushing touchdowns so far this game himself, as well as uh, that huge scramble that their quarterback had. And our guys are just not there. They're not in position. I don't understand. I guess I need to take better control of the cornerbacks, but I'm terrible doing that. That's why I normally play. Uh, I stick to the defensive line. But uh, now this game, uh, this lead here seems a little bit insurmountable as uh, our offense, which is really stagnated in the second half, uh, needs to somehow come up with 10 points in the last uh, three minutes of this game, which is possible, but we have to move quickly here. So our quarterback's going to drop back and float the one to number nine, and there you see it. Number 12 makes another great play on the ball <laughs> and gets his second interception of the day, our fourth turnover of the second half. Not even the game, just the second half. And uh, that will essentially do it here. If we can uh, stop Purdue, there is still three minutes left, but they are just going to uh, essentially run the clock out um, and try and ice this ball game if they can. But uh, we don't have a whole lot of shots here. We're not going to waste any timeouts because there's still just way too much time on the clock to do so. Uh, and there you see we forced the fourth down. And look at this stat line for their quarterback. I mean, their quarterback is 5 of 17. And Purdue is, is in a great position to beat us, man. This is just, uh, you can't lose ball games like that. Our, our backup hasn't even played that terribly, even though he's racked up the, the three picks in the second half of the game, um, which is just really upsetting to see uh, after such a pretty solid first-half performance with the, uh, the two uh, uh, passing touchdowns that he had. But uh, he still has a chance here to play hero if we can move the ball uh, at any bit, and we find number nine who catches that ball over his defender, and we get a nice first down there as we're going to have to start calling some timeouts and conserve some time because we got uh, 10, uh, 10 points to gain here and uh, a whole lot of the field to go. So, and a nice play by number 9. That was number 12 again. We had to kind of catch that one over. Could have easily made the pick again. So, uh, what can we do now? First and 10, we're getting closer to midfield, and the pressure's onto our quarterback, and we somehow get rid of that ball, and it is dangerously tipped again, and number 12 is in position again to get another pick, and thankfully he does not. But the pressure's on. We need our uh, O-line to really step it up here. So, second and 10, and the pressure's coming again, and we try and flip that one out to number 2, and we can't get it. So, it's third and 10 now. We only have a minute and a half left to operate. At this point, we're going to have to play some, some tricky stuff here if we want to get the ball back, and... Uh, eliminate this uh, deficit here and we're going to float this one all the way out to uh, number nine and there's just nothing but boilermakers in position who tip this one to each other and uh, number 33 now is the one who comes down with it giving us our third pick of the day i think it's the third is it the third or the fourth i've lost count at this point we've thrown a ton of interceptions uh, per usual that's just a normal northwestern game at this point uh, I don't know why. It just happens. I mean, that one was a pretty terrible decision on my part, but the other ones this game were even like, 
I remember recording it. I was mad at myself. I'm like, I'm not even trying to throw dangerous throws. Like, these are just normal throws. And uh, they're just through the divine hand of the NCAA God. He has decided that I am uh, I'm destined to throw as many picks this year as I possibly can. So... If number 16 was really hoping that this would be his moment to gain a starting job here and finish the season, I don't I don't think this was it, unfortunately. Um, as Purdue is uh, just going to run at the clock here and line up and let the clock at triple zeros and take their 10-point lead uh, and go home as we uh, take our third straight loss, a tough, tough loss to Purdue who in that fourth quarter, man, we just fell apart. I just It just completely went belly up. I remember the frustration was just at an all-time high when uh, they scored that running play, when 25 broke off those two tackles. I, I was I think I was asking myself, just like, what do you do? Like, what is a man to do? Um, and Purdue uh, reigns it on there in the second half to win the game. As they get 159 yards on the ground, yeah, that's going to that's gonna easily win you the ball game, especially when we can't run the ball really at all. Um Third down percentage is pretty bad for both teams, uh, as it normally is. Uh, but obviously, the five turnovers is really where uh, things go awry. Two fumbles in one game. We don't normally fumble the ball, which is crazy. We're normally just a, an interception team. Uh, but we had two this game. We only lost one. So, um, the time of possession, we still held control of. But uh, here's the stat line for a quarterback. An 88.4 rating. Not very good. 12 of 27 with only 158 yards and two touchdowns to his four picks. So uh, I don't want to sit here and say that with number 14 we could have won the game because uh, we usually could have won with number 16. But, uh, yeah, things don't go well for us. We get 41 yards from our running back, which is rare. We uh, haven't done that much this season. Uh, we don't even have a 100-yard receiver, which is kind of crazy for us, too. And not much in the pancake department either. Just kind of a kind of a lull of a game, I guess, for us. I mean, it started off pretty well. I mean, you got to remember we led at halftime, and then things just kind of fell apart. We get outscored fourteen to zero in the second half uh, to cement our loss. But it's okay because we're going to look ahead now. We have another home game. We're going to try and snap our losing streak against the Penn State Nittany Lions. Uh, my confidence is still pretty low, <laughs> as Penn State has for sure got to be the better team. But uh, they're on a losing streak of their own. Their season hasn't went as well as uh, they probably had hoped. So uh, hopefully we can get at least another win here as the season's looking more and more lost with each week. Um, but we need you here in Evanston, Illinois, to uh, cheer us on as we take on the Penn State Nittany Lions at home. <laughs> 